Some people think Thermaltake's Tower case series all look like a bunch of 3D printers, or with the Tower 300, a popcorn machine. And while they're not wrong, it's also pretty cool too. I've been using the Tower 100 case for a few years now. I'm a tower head, I guess you could say. I love the shape and form factor, but the thermals on this ITX case can get pretty dicey. And I've been wanting to shake things up with something new yet familiar, you know? Initially, I wanted to go with the Tower 200, which is pretty much a slightly bigger Tower 100. But then at CES this year, Thermaltake unveiled their Tower 300 MATX PC case in hydrangea blue, and I was smitten. This thing is freaking sick looking. Like seriously, somebody take it it's temperature. <laughs> See what I did there? We're gonna we're gonna look at the temperature on this PC like like it was a joke about how the case looks hot and how you gotta see if the internals are also hot. Nobody does PC colors quite like Thermal Take. And let's get this straight right off the bat. Yes, there's a 25 on this case. It's only on the hydrangea blue one. It's not just a sticker. It's physically painted on the case. And allegedly they're gonna start selling this color without the number at some point. I like it, but I totally acknowledge that it's not everybody's deal. One thing that's really cool about the Tower 300 and the rest of the Tower series are how they shake up the building process. This case specifically does a couple of things differently, and obviously the first thing you'll notice when you see builds with these cases is that the motherboard is mounted sideways, which puts your I.O. facing the ceiling. But what's also interesting is that it technically supports Project Zero motherboards, even though they don't disclose that on their website, which we'll visit more in a minute. The Tower 300 also supports two 120 or 140 millimeter fans behind the motherboard, up to a 420 millimeter or three 120 or 140 millimeter fans on the right side, another fan on this little power supply basement area, and another two 120 or 140 millimeter fans up on top, which weirdly go above the IO, and that's probably my biggest gripe with the case. And as with all of Thermaltake's Tower Series cases, you can also get this little display for your temperatures and whatnot that goes on the bottom of the case. They didn't send us one of those, but allegedly it exists. The Tower 300 also has this new chassis stand kit thing, sold separately for another 30 to 40-ish bucks, depending on where you get it, that lets the entire PC sit sideways and slightly tilted upward and makes it look more like some kind of sick sci-fi pod thing. It even has a cap that replaces the part where the feet are, so it's even more science pod-like, I guess. Now that's pod racing. Sure. There's also room to mount SATA SSDs on the side here, if that's your thing. And even this little plastic piece that you can use to block this hole by the bottom fan if you're using a GPU that's less than 280 millimeters long. The topinator of the case pops off, revealing the upper exhaust fans, and then you can fold them up to get to the I.O. And the glass panels, the vented side panels, they all just kind of click off. See? Now, a lot of people are gonna look at this case and assume it's just like a heat trap because of the weird layout, but I have scientific proof that that isn't the case for this case. So stick around for that. Naturally, since this is the first Project Zero compatible case that I've had, to catch the air quotes, I obviously went for that route for the motherboard. NVIDIA also sent us this beautiful 4080 Super Founders Edition that we were supposed to review, so I hope this counts for that. And say what you will about the Founders Editions, but they are purdy. And this will actually work out better since the Founders Edition cards pass air through the top. And since the motherboard is sideways, it'll be like the right side making the graphics card also function as a pretty decent intake fan. For the CPU, we use the 7800X3D since I'm also making the jump from DDR4 to DDR5 with an AM5 socket board. I also use this 32 gig kit of crucial DDR5 memory because they sent us a whole bunch of these sticks and they're awesome. And since I'm technically considering this build an upgrade for me, even though basically the whole PC is new, I set out to reuse my old drives, including, and don't judge me, my 256 gig two and a half inch SATA SSD boot drive, my two fat hard drives that I've never mounted properly in their entire life, Lives, and my two terabyte M.2 NVMe drive that I use as my primary storage, but it's also kind of full. The original plan was to repurpose this 240 millimeter NZXT Kraken AIO from my work PC. Notice how that's not what ended up in there. And then I was gonna repurpose my old personal case, cooler, CPU, and motherboard into my new work computer. That's because I hate my work PC case. <laughs> There's nothing inherently wrong with it, and it's actually kind of cool looking, but all the IO is on the bottom, and that makes it horrible to use in the office since I'm constantly plugging in all kinds of nonsense into it, and every time I had to tilt it over to access all the ports. I was also planning on reusing the SFX power supply for my work PC because I thought the Tower 300 could support that without a special bracket, but I was wrong. 
So instead, we stole a random power supply from a half-built PC we had laying around the office somewhere. So to review, I have all these new parts, including the Tower 300, being used exclusively for my PC upgrade. I'm side grading my work PC to incorporate components from my current personal computer, and I'm currently gutting my old work PC case and leaving it somewhere in the basement that'll probably trip over in a couple months. Project Zero motherboards are a lot like any other board, but backwards in the sense that all your pins for your fans and stuff are on the back, which means that only specialized cases that have cutouts in the appropriate places to access everything are compatible with them. And this is why I think Thermaltake doesn't advertise that the Tower 300 supports these. Most of the pins are on the back of the side with that's behind the graphics card slot, like where the front panel and USB headers usually are on a normal motherboard, but on the back. And since this case needs you to mount the board sideways, the pins end up in this weird corner that makes it really difficult to access them. You'd think you could just remove the plate that's in the way, but it's actually riveted on. So the only way I was able to hook everything up properly was just eyeballing it. You know, which clusters of pins had the appropriate piece missing that lined up with the connector that needed to be plugged in from the other components. Oh, and the motherboard was also an open box one from Newegg, which turns out, bad idea. It ended up having a bad dim slot, and I'm also pretty convinced that it killed that cracking cooler that I was trying to use originally. Seriously, I plugged this thing in, and it just didn't turn on. Dead in the water. Get it? Liquid cooler and cracking is like water things. So we ordered a replacement board and picked up this 360 millimeter Corsair AIO. I have this empty 240 millimeter version of the same box because that one also died. That's obviously not what's in here still. Uh, and that's because it caught on fire. Not the pump, but just the screen somehow. I didn't like that noise. And I know, I know it looks like my fault. I know it looks like I did this. I don't know why I did everything right. It just freaking, the display, it's the only part. It exploded, caught on fire, you could smell it. And now I got this cool Deep Cool Assassin 4 air cooler because I clearly should not be trusted around liquid coolers anymore, I guess. But also, maybe I just shouldn't be around any coolers anymore because when we first checked the temperatures, the CPU was running super hot and it turns out the fan cable extension that I haphazardly grabbed from a random drawer in Brett's basement was actually some weird niche voltage limiting cable that was hardcore throttling the cooling efficiency of the Assassin 4. It was still letting the fans blow, but not nearly fast enough to maintain proper temperatures. And judging by how hot the cable was to the touch, it was only a matter of time before it melted. So good thing I noticed and promptly swapped it out for the proper cable. So now that this thing's totally assembled, probably, uh, the airflow works like this. The power supply and the GPU fans act as intakes that pass air over the memory, and then the two fans on the CPU cooler pull air out over the 7800X3D, and the top and sides are exhaust, and they go like that. I couldn't fit the fans behind the motherboard since there wasn't enough space from the cables poking out from the Project Zero board, though. And also, this is where the Founders Edition card shines since it actually sends airflow through the backplate where other GPUs would just blow directly onto the heatsink and not pass their exhaust into the center of the case. And I know a bunch of people are gonna immediately doubt that the airflow actually works as intended. So here's me shooting a fog machine at the PC so you can see exactly what's happening. Hey, uh, it's me from the future. I actually, I have to show you vertical footage that I recorded for a TikTok for this thing because while I was filming B-roll, I actually shattered this, this panel right here. Here it is. That's what's left of it. So, uh, bear, bear with me. All right, but now that we've proven that the air do be flowing though, I can already hear a few of you going for the comments section already. I hear you going to say that the hot GPU air, it's not gonna be enough to cool the CPU. And I guess that's fair to speculate on, but don't just assume things, cause you'll wind up looking silly. To put this all to rest, I ran Furmark and Cinebench individually and simultaneously to stress test the temperatures on the 4080 Super and 7800X3D, which idle at around 27 and 42 Celsius respectively. During a Furmark test, the hottest the GPU got was 59 Celsius and the Cinebench test got the CPU up to a little over 80 degrees, all without the components becoming thermally throttled. Then I ran Cinebench and Furmark simultaneously to see if the hottest possible air coming from the GPU would have a significant impact on the CPU temperature while they're both sitting at max load. 
which is a funny phrase. Keep in mind that this is also the worst case scenario that's been put together. I cannot stress to you enough how unlikely the PC is to ever get this hot during a normal gaming session. The hottest either component got during the second test was another degree or two higher, which wasn't even enough to thermal throttle anything. Meaning heat is not an issue here in terms of performance. And the most fun part about all this, the Deep Cool Assassin 4 is not only overkill for the CPU, but this whole time I've had this switch on the cooler set to low noise mode, meaning the fans are capable of spinning even faster in moving more air around. Now that I knew this PC could handle its own under the worst possible circumstances, it was time to benchmark. But turns out as beefy as this thing was, my wimpy old boot drive was not cutting it, and it was taking literal calendar years to download anything because the C drive was constantly sitting at 100% usage. Oh, and those chunky hard disk drives I mentioned earlier, I left those out. I'm just gonna hope there wasn't anything on them that I really needed. And anyways, Brett heard me complaining about how slow everything was, and he just whipped this two terabyte crucial SSD at me from across the room. So I got one of those two now, I guess. Also, it was at this point that I was putzing around in the case while the PC was on because the IO's in such a weird position. You have to take off these two thumb screws to pull off the top fans and access it. So while I was doing that, I bumped a spinning fan with like the meat of my thumb and a blade literally snapped off and the whole computer started shaking violently. But with the fan replaced and Windows installed on the fresh new SSD, it was time to get my gamer on. If you want to know how a well-ventilated 4080 Super and 7800 X3D handle video games at 1440p, then strap in fellas, because I, I tried a couple. First, we've got Cyberpunk, Old Faithful, running on ultra settings with DLS turned on at an average of 76 frames. No surprises there. I'm sure it'd handle its own without DLSS, but this right here is how I'm planning on playing the game anyways. Next, we have The Witcher 3, which can still be pretty demanding despite its age, especially at 1440p ray tracing ultra settings. I ran this test twice, once with FSR 2 enabled and once with DLSS. In my ray traced ultra FSR 2 gameplay, I was seeing an average of 62 FPS, but I was also pretty consistently dipping into the 50s while moving around and in combat. But once I turned on DLSS with those same settings, we were in business, okay, with 121 frames per second average that stayed pretty consistently above 100. I'd be doing a real disservice if I didn't test Fortnite 2, so I did all that at the 1440p epic preset in uncapped frame rate. Here I was getting 108 average FPS that held pretty strong for most of my match and never dipped below 60 frames, even at its worst. I also recently bought Far Cry 6 on sale, so I figured I'd give that a run. And it got an average of 167 frames, again, at the game's 1440p Ultra preset, which ain't half bad. But it was also getting as high as 190, depending what was going on on the screen at the time. Obviously, I was really excited about this thing. But also, I gotta say, I didn't really care how hot this thing ran since it's for my personal rig, and I fully expected it to have some kind of negative impact on performance, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how all the testing worked out. The Tower 300 is a little pricier than some budget cases that'll do you just fine, but if you want something eye-catching that can actually get the job done and well, this weird pod thing just might be your deal.